Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Langfield, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at these wide angle lens converters. Are they worth your money? Are they any good? Do they actually produce any good quality to your footage? Does it destroy your image? We're gonna be taking a look at them today. So my dad actually picked these up for me from a used store. He picked up this one and the one that's actually on my lens right now. This is a 0.7 and that's a 0.6 lens converter. It makes them wider, right? Um, and he picked them up for like $20 for both of them together. So $10 each, they're very very cheap. Um, they've got a front element of glass and one on the back. Same with that one there. And you can pick them up new on Amazon. I've got a couple of them pulled up here. One of them being newer. It's a 0.43 professional HD wide angle, $36. Here's That's Canadian. There's another one for a 43.43. Uh, for $50. So they're cheap. You can get them on Amazon used. Now the question here is, are they worth it? Are they worth your money for $50? I think conclusion, yes. They are awesome little things that will make your lenses wider. Now why would you buy this? Basically if you want to try out a wider lens and you don't want to spend a lot of money on them, you can try these and it'll make it wider. There's a couple downsides to them though, but downsides which are kind of positive for me because I kind of like the destruction of the cheap lens that it does to my footage here. A couple things. One, it is blurry on the sides here. It doesn't keep focus. So you'll see that I'm in focus because I'm in the center and it's sharp, right? Not in focus. I'm talking about sharpness. It's sharp here, but as you go to the edges, you'll notice that it actually gets a lot softer where it should be sharp. This is a flaw to the lens because they're cheaply made, but I actually kind of like this because it reminds me of kind of the anamorphic look or some lenses that are detuned. That's kind of like when the edges get softer or they make that on purpose for different looks or feels. I kind of like the effect that it does. It's a little softer here and here. You just don't want to be able to frame your subject maybe here because he'll be a little bit softer than he's if he's in the middle. But that's kind of a characteristic that I like. The other one here that it will do is because they're cheaply made, you'll see that there is chromatic aberration on the edges. Again, if you like chromatic aberration, which I kind of do, then you're gonna be okay with this. You're gonna notice that it has significant chromatic aberration on the edges. So if there's any sharp edges on the on the edges of your frame here, you're gonna notice that it has some of those red or blue um, fringes on the edges, which if you like that, that's awesome. I don't mind it, so I think it's okay for that. The other downside is that it does overall bring your quality down a little bit. You pay so much money for sharp lenses and then you stick this cheaper lens on the front element and it will degrade your quality a little bit, which again, I'm okay with that a little bit because I find that if you're shooting something, especially for video, and you want to degrade the quality a little bit so it doesn't look so clinical or so sharp or so digital, this kind of helps to bring that quality down a little bit. Because usually I end up putting the very sharp footage in the computer and degrading it by putting some grain or softening it up a little bit in post. So this does kind of those things all together. Another thing that I noticed while I was shooting out with it is that it doesn't block flares. It actually accepts flares in a kind of neat way because it has so many elements of glass. You've got the front one, you've got the back one, then you've got the front element in your actual lens. You've got the middles, middle lenses and then the back element. You're gonna notice that you have a lot of lenses. So it's gonna create some interesting flares because they don't have great coating and they're kind of cheaply made. You're gonna notice that the flares accentuate, which if you like flares, I sometimes like flares it kind of adds that really neat effect. So I think they're worth it. The autofocus is actually impressively good on this. I've got an a7 III in the back with a 35 millimeter uh, lens with the lens converter. And you notice that the autofocus does work quite well there. So as I move in closer, it still is quite sharp in the middle there and it does keep focus relatively good. So I'm actually really cool with these. One more thing is depending on the focal length that you're shooting in, you might get some vignetting, some excessive vignetting. Just because it's so wide, you're gonna start seeing the edges, which are right here, the edges. You're gonna start seeing the edges of the lens because it's so wide. As you can see here, if I zoom out a little bit, you're gonna see that I have a couple edges right here and here. And all you have to do is just, if you're shooting in 4K, which I am, you can just zoom that in, crop it in a little bit, and it's no problem. If the photos, no big deal. You just crop that in and then you're okay with that. Depending on the lens, of course. I'm shooting on a 35, so the amount of vignette is not as severe. If you're shooting on like a 50 millimeter and you're making it wider, you might not notice them at all. But if you're definitely shooting on an already wide angle lens and you make it even wider, 
you're gonna notice that the circle is very severe and it might be unusable for you because you'd have to zoom in or crop in the image and post significantly. So what I did is I just went out to the river here in Brantford and we just spent the day. I just got some footage of us going there and walking a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. You guys are able to see the images. Keep those things in mind. You got chromatic aberration, a little softer on the edges. Of course, the vignette and um, the footage is not gonna be as sharp. So I uploaded in 4K so you guys can get the best um, view of what is actually happening and you guys can make the decision for yourselves. So in conclusion, are they worth it? I absolutely think they're worth it. If you can buy them for as cheap as my dad found them, which was around $10 each, definitely buy them. If you can buy them for 35 to 50, that's great. I wouldn't spend any more than $100 because it just, it wouldn't be worth it. Just spend, save the money on an actual lens. But if you can find them for that cheap, definitely buy them. They're a lot of fun. They can create some really interesting images. And um, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I wanted to show you guys one thing here. I forgot to show you at the beginning of the video. It's just a before and after with the lens converter and one without the lens converter. I thought you might want to see that if you're thinking about buying it. Here's with the lens converter, wide 35 millimeter, and I'm gonna remove it. And here it is without the lens converter. As you can see here, 35 millimeter without, and there you go. That gives you an idea of what you can get with 35 millimeter. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.